art of New Orleans, but Louisiana. There are artists who live in different parts of Louisiana who may not have um, a voice, may not have a venue to show their work, showcase their work um, to throughout the world, you know, and that's what the website becomes is a portal to, you know, the world in some, in an essence. Mm -hmm. So it's important to um, focus on diversity, the diversity of visual arts, um, people who create it, the places where it's created, the meanings and, and so forth, and to just be inclusive. Um, so I would love to talk with you all more about it. Um, I have information on, on what this website is, and it's supposed to be something that links to other, um, other websites that are already existing and um, things like that. So. Great, thank you. Um, we're gonna hone in a little bit more, maybe try to poke Eric and get some more out of him. Um, <laughs> And I'm going to throw this open to everybody, and anyone can answer. No sequence uh, is required. How much of criticism is or should be a report on what you've seen, a judgment on the work, an interpretation of the work for non-artists, or something else? You talking to me? Why don't we start with Eric, and then we'll move out. We'll move out. Yeah, probably all of that. <laughs> I knew he was going to do this to me. Um, well, I, I actually have this quiz, because I've discussed this with Eric before. Um, do you think it's important to include negative criticism when you work? Um, yeah, I do. But only when it's somebody who is, uh, like, you know, really, really famous. Because, uh, you know, because they have a standard that they have established that their, their fame and their success is built on. So when they slip and totter and start to fall over the edge, something just doesn't work, or it's like really, really bad. It's important to say that. But for people like emerging artists, what good does that do? I mean, it's like uh, knocking a garage band or something. It's like kicking an infant. I mean, what's the point? And space is so limited and increasingly limited. If you really don't like something and it's not an established artist, why waste your time on, on that when there's something good to write about, usually, since there's so much going on? Um, what you said earlier about um, how much we should describe the experience, I would love to know how many of my readers also go and see the art, because I really don't know. Um, it might be, I, I sort of assume that um, reading the story about the exhibit is often the whole experience that the person <laughs> is having. So I, I try to, you know, I try to describe as vividly and briefly as possible, and and offer up some criticism, um, hopeful that, you know, maybe maybe down the line somebody will go and see art uh, um, in person, and. Um, like Eric, I don't think I'm called on to be negative terribly often. It's a, you know, art is a positive endeavor. Everybody's, everybody's doing something sort of good. Um, and I'm not called on to, uh, to criticize that very often. Occasionally. The call comes from you. Yeah, I think so. Well, the call comes from the show or the, or the situation. Um, yeah. Okay. Adam, do you want to weigh in on this? Well, first I want to say what I appreciate that uh, Eric's point of view is when they're on their way down, kick them. <laughs> kick them when they're on their way down, which is absolutely the way to treat them. Um, <laughs> what's interesting about art criticism is that most of the art out there today, and tell me if I'm wrong, a lot of it anyway, requires some sort of writing uh, to have access to it. We speak about this a great deal. Why? Why are we writing about art? First of all, the visual arts, more than any other art, more than film or drama or literature, is involved with a dialogue of what makes it contemporary and what makes it art. So the art critic is involved in keeping that dialogue alive. So it's doing two functions. First of all, it's explaining what we're seeing, which uh, a great deal of the visual arts now seems to need that bit of explanation. We don't, we're not quite sure what we're looking at since the uh, artists not easily representational, it's often conceptual. We often don't want to know what the artist is thinking. They're not providing us with what they're thinking or they're involved with a, a sort of jargon which doesn't make it easily interpretable. 
so you know that's what we're doing but that dialogue of uh, that there's a necessity to be contemporary and to be placed in a context is individual to the visual arts that I don't think any other medium has. So thus the necessity and our necessity. Well, that kind of leads to my next question. How much responsibility does the critic have to educate the public in newer or more esoteric forms of art? Uh, Rashida, do you want to have how much responsibility does the critic Does the critic have to educate the public? In, in newer forms of art, more esoteric forms of art? I think the critic has as much responsibility as the artist has. I think the critic is bringing their own interpretation and experience to responding to the work as the artist is to bring the work. So I think the critic's responsibility is to be authentic. So that that's kind of back to um, Adam's point that the critic is making another <laughs> work. Responsibility is always such a dangerous word. It seems to have a, uh, a moral aspect to it. I'm not sure if we're responsible. I mean, I just think that that's what we do. Explain it. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I mean, the art critic, does this work? Yes, they turned us off by now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, essentially, the art critic's role is to construct meaning. That's his role. I, I don't quite agree that that is the artist's role quite as much. Uh, uh, so in that sense, it is his responsibility. It's his responsibility to look for the context, uh, like Adam was saying, um, and essentially try to make some sense for it for other people. Because, uh, I mean, if you take generic art solutions and Noma right now, uh, most people don't know the history of uh, uh, appropriation in 20th century art, but it is the responsibility of the art critic to know. And, uh, and from there, uh, give a thoughtful analysis of, his, of the exhibition. Yeah, and it, it, um, it works two ways, because artists, I think, would like to be understood but they would like not to be narrowed. That the understanding, uh, a, a person, an onlooker's understanding of their work can be very broad. It can be a hundred things. And, and so they would love to be understood. They would like a critic not to make it necessary to understand it one way. And, and, and that's always uh, this little push and pull. What do you mean by your work? You know, what's that supposed to mean? Well, I don't exactly want to tell you uh, exactly what I meant because you know, that will diminish the number of things it can possibly mean. So that's part of the challenge, I think. Um, you know, um... One reason I ask is I heard Doug speak at Tulane a couple years ago, and I, I, it, it opened my eyes to something that I think you are dealing with in your particular context with the Times-Picayune, that um, you actually, I, I took it to mean that you part of your brief was to make art understandable to the guy in the street that would never perhaps go into a gallery. And so, you know, it, for people to criticize and say, well, why is he writing about that guy who's t painting, uh, you know, shale on the side of the road, you're, you were finding people, I'm, I'm not expressing this well, you were actually writing for the non-artist in such a way as to open up our world to them. Yeah, I think so. I, 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 I think so. Um, I have read, I mean, we've all read, you know, if you read old issues of Art Forum and things, sometimes I don't know what's going on in, you know, in the story. And, and, I, and I, you leave too many people out. And, and um, uh, as, as time goes on, as, as the years go by and I write more and more, I'm much more interested in, in writing, um, writing for the, the broadest audience to, to, to let everybody see. Prospect One was a great example because this artwork was springing up in everybody's neighborhood. There it was. You know, what was it? What should you make of that? Yeah, I want to I commend Doug for uh, 